is a really difficult maneuver. And what I will say to you is that an experienced pilot with thousands of hours probably would have to take between 10 and 20 attempts, skilled thousands of hour pilot, probably 10 or 20 times before they would be able to pull off that maneuver. 757 is not designed to do that. 757 is designed to be basically a cruise ship in the sky. It's not acrobatic. So you just can't do that with one of those big airplanes. The air traffic controllers at the Dulles Approach Control, when they saw this target come in and make this turn, they said, oh, that's a fighter. Because military fighters can do that, OK? And military fighters with autopilots and being flown remotely, they have the structural cap capability they had designed to be able to be that acrobatic. Absurdity of absurdities. There is also the height at which this aeroplane was flying to be explained. It is supposed to have followed the lie of the land at six meters from the ground for one kilometer, managing also to jump over a hill. Then it went over a roadway, and it finally got there without making any other turns because by now there was no more space. have the airplane, the story has the uh, Flight 77 was going 530 miles an hour, 460 knots, and it can't go that fast on level flight that down, down that low. If you're up high, the true airspeed can go up and it can go that fast, but not down low. It's, the air is too dense. I challenge any pilot, any pilot anywhere, give him a Boeing 757, tell him to do 400 knots 20 feet above the ground for half a mile. Can't do. Can't do. It's, aerodynamic. it's aerodynamically impossible. And so the story of how the airplane hit the Pentagon uh, is, just doesn't make any sense at all. After Honey Hanjo, the plane's pilot had been identified, his flight instructor declared that his student was not even able to fly a small, single-engine aeroplane. <laughs> These guys didn't have the experience fly, to make that kind of maneuver, uh, even if the airplane could fly that. The man could not fly at all. There's no way he could possibly come out of a 172 and fly a jet that you've never flown before. That's like showing me how to carve up a Christmas turkey and then say, go make a heart transplant. Even if we suppose that such an incompetent pilot had the opportunity to fly a Boeing 757, we still have to ask ourselves how he managed to violate the most heavily protected airspace in the world. No untracked aircraft get near the Pentagon and in and near the White House. It just doesn't happen. In Washington, D.C., we have one of the most restricted airspaces in the world. It's called P-56. It has a separate radar tracking system and a separate military response system. P-56 is that uh, restricted airspace that is around the Pentagon and the White House, and it, it is a highly, highly, highly sensitive area. There are supposed to be no unknown aircraft that can go through there. That has an air defense identification zone in a 50-mile radius around D.C., and then it has a protected zone 17 miles around the Washington Monument and an inner protected zone three miles around the Capitol. That space is essentially unbreachable. It has to be because of the importance of the buildings there. It's like, it's like an aviation no man's land. Nobody goes in there, nobody. They have F-16 and F-18 jets at Andrews Air Force Base about 10 miles south of D.C. They also have the 113th National Guard Air Wing at Anacostia Naval Air Station uh, that can send scrambler jets up in a very short period of time. Both are in place that day. Neither one responds at all until after the Pentagon is hit. 
In addition to that, the Pentagon has its own defenses. If a plane, any kind of a plane, was coming in towards the Pentagon, why didn't the uh, anti-aircraft missile batteries that are there, why didn't they fire to protect the building? This is, after all, the most heavily protected building on the planet. That craft had to have been a military craft because only the military craft put out a signal. It's called an Identify Friend or Foe IFF device. And only the military craft would be allowed to approach the building. The two radar systems that the military radars, defensive radar systems read are a civilian transponder and a military transponder. Military transponder is called IFF. Civilian aircraft do not have an IFF transponder. They are not given that take capability, okay? So if there was a 757, American 757, that went into the Pentagon, for example, um, and it shut off its transponder, it didn't have a military IFF transponder on it. So it was a primary target. It's a primary target going into that airspace. Should have been shot down. What I'm describing to you is a breakdown in standard operating procedure by FAA, NORAD, P-56, and the Pentagon, all on the same day, in the middle of, after 9.05, what was known nationally to be a terrorist attack. And it makes no sense. Nobody goes in there. This is, after all, the most heavily protected building on the planet. <laughs> Just doesn't make any sense at all. The Pentagon symbolizes our military power in the world. And they had hit it. And uh, to this day, nobody knows what they hit it with, whether it was an airplane or whether it was a missile. And our government will never tell us. So we just kept wait for the French to explain it. <laughs> what hit it? What's going on? There is nobody anywhere at any point in this entire investigation that has said that is positively American 77. They suppose it. They presume it, they assume it, they say this is what we think it is. The controller, Daniel O'Brien, who saw the unidentified blip coming in from the west at a high rate of speed, had no way of knowing what it was because the primary was a primary return only, the secondary radar, the transponder was turned off. In order to identify a primary radar target, you have to have two-way communications between the pilot and the air traffic controller, and the pilot has to report over a certain geographical location, or you have to be able to tell the pilot in the airplane to make a series of turns, and then the radar can controller can look at all of the primary targets on his or her tra radar scope and say, there's an aircraft, or there's a target that just executed the turns I told. Now I can positively identify the aircraft. That never occurred. It's huge. Now, if Flight 77 really did go off of the radar screen for 36 minutes, according to the, her testimony, then the airplane was no longer flying. Or it was, in a, it was low enough that it was out of radar coverage. One of the two. So was the airplane landed at some place, some remote field? Then it does make sense that they lost the airplane for 36 minutes. But other than that, there was very little explanation for that. In the light of what we've seen and heard, it seems that the official version of 9-11 is not sufficient. We want the facts to be explained to us, and above all, we want them to be properly investigated. Basically, we want someone to finally tell us the truth.